Calvin Seminary has been a part of my life for as long as I've been in ministry, right? I would have never guessed that the institution that formed me in a certain way could embrace a dream, a vision, an opportunity presented by Terry and Linda to having a, a, a huge impact in prison ministry. It's a, it's a story that I, I don't think I would be creative enough to write. I, I think it only exists in the mind of God. Classes hadn't started yet, and I was surrounded by men that would be in a cohort with me. There was a joy there, and I remember one guy was playing the guitar, and another guy kicked off his shoes and danced. And never in my life have I seen that in prison. And, and, and so I, I think, frankly, that was a bit of foreshadowing of what was to come. For God to do things in massive ways to change the direction of societies for his kingdom, there always have to be people who have resources to support whatever he's doing. And I think Terry and Linda, they've been crucial at, in getting this whole thing going. When I first heard about Terry and Linda and their passion for uh, prison ministry and prison reform, I heard the story of how Terry and Linda wanted uh, seminary faculty to go to Angola Prison in Louisiana because they said, you just have to see this. Well, Angola had a seminary program and was turning out dozens upon dozens of seminary graduates who were then pastoring over 30 churches in the prison. And it literally transformed what was once called America's bloodiest prison into this um, almost oasis where violence dropped over 85%. So Terry said, you've got to go see this. So a handful of uh, folks from Calvin Seminary went, and of course they were amazed. And the question that was on their minds the whole way back to Michigan was, could we do this in Michigan? And of course, I think that's what Terry and Linda hoped would happen. Even though he initially would probably say, I was just helping plant a few seeds, I do think he had the garden in mind. I do think he had the idea that if this happens, who knows where it might lead. Once again, not to, that he was going to cultivate it all and do it all himself. In fact, his desire was to see others join him in this ministry and the, in these causes. Terry had a really thoughtful Christian philosophy of business, uh, the center of which seemed to be, we will thrive only by causing others to thrive. Anything he got involved with, right, typically, grew and, w and was a success and so the in, in a way from a business standpoint uh, the last thing you expect is to get involved in prison ministry. In the ninth year of the Calvin Prison Initiative we can look back on the origins of it and know that without the gift of Terry and Linda to um, invite the Calvin Seminary community to Angola to see firsthand the transformation that had happened there, the Calvin Prison Initiative would not exist. It was their encouragement to come and see, come and see what has happened here, and then take that and imagine what could happen here in Michigan. And, and it worked. Their lives have been changed. And you, you sit in these classes or you walk through these hallways and you see that and you, 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 you become changed. And you become so grateful for the faith of our fathers. It's probably the Calvin program that I'm proudest of because I think it is so obviously a demonstration of the working of the Holy Spirit. I mean, we teach our other students, you know, go out there and be an agent of renewal and you try to equip them for that. But when you go into prison and hear the stories of these people and see how God is already at work in their lives and then give them a leg up through this education to pursue some of their dreams, um, the transformation and how you get a front row seat to see that process so dramatically and vividly, uh, you wish so many constituents, so many people in our broader community could get that same front row view. Everyone thought that, that we were going to 
to receive a degree. None of us, I don't believe, at that time knew about transformative education, that we were actually beginning a process that would transform who we were and then by extension to transform the culture at large. The more we do this ministry, the more it actually does grow. It grows in people's hearts. We never have too many problems at all getting faculty who want to sign up and do the course again. We actually have, have, we have retirees who said, if that's what teaching is, I want to do it again and again and again. We have students who at the end of their time want to say, what more can I do? And this idea of what more can I do, I think is actually something that was the, at, the, at the core of what the Vanderays were doing. They had experienced something in prison. They experienced some ways of even personal ministry in that way. And then the question is, what more are we gonna do with this gift? When that seed is planted by a family like the Vanderays and grows and flourishes through an institution like Kelvin Seminary, it comes to what we see today. I can't be more grateful to Terry and Linda for their, their using what God's given them in such strategic and important ways. All of this was inspired by how Terry and Linda opened up the invitation to see what was happening in Angola, and we knew that it was possible here in Michigan. I now wake up with gratitude and wonder that I can become part of something so great. I could never pay back the, the gifts that I've been given, but frankly, I've been given so much more than that. I've been given a chance to, to participate in transforming corrections. I've been a, given a chance to transform other people's lives. And that simply is something that money can't buy. And so since I can't pay it back, then I spend my life paying it forward. Come to Him with all your heart. Come and lay your burdens down For peace He came to give And joy shall be the crown And joy shall be the crown Terry and Linda, you don't know me, but my name is Nick. Through both of you doing the Lord's work, you've changed my life. You've made a difference in my life and in so many lives. You've made a, an incredible difference in people's lives at the Hanlon Correctional Facility. Thank you for your service, for your contribution, and most importantly, for your vision that life could be better. Thank you.